welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. I'm here today with a review of Alice the 101st. This is a manga that was released in Japan in 2007 and has just started being released over here in America. Now, this is, just to make you all aware, this is technically Shonen Ai, boys love. But don't let that scare you if you're not into that kind of a thing. There is no actual attraction between any two male characters in this volume, except jokingly, although um, that may change in future volumes, I don't know. Basic premise. Teenage boy is accepted into a very prestigious musical academy. He plays the violin. He sucks. However, he can play certain pieces with tremendous soul and energy and just makes you weep kind of feeling. But he can only play those well. Everything else he just can barely sight read. So the basic question is, how is he going to survive in this academy? How is he going to last any length of time when he hasn't had the basics that have been drilled into the rest of the students, student body since they were you know, six years old? They've all been you know, playing forever. So that's the, you know, the, the, you know, the fundamental question. And of course, there's other drama and stuff you know, woven into the rest of it. The cast is, I think, what you'd expect from a Shonen Ai title. The main character is very emotional, lots of mood swings. He has a rather emo roommate, depressed a lot of the time. There is a very Bishonen upper classmate who kind of tries to show him the ropes, and he's the one who is kind of jokingly hitting on the main character a lot. Uh, and then there are other wacky classmates you know, scattered throughout. Not a complaint, just the way they do things. Now, one thing I really want to point out here when I'm talking about the characters is the dialogue. Since I'm not used to Shonen Ai titles, I just don't read a lot of them. And because the art style can be very similar from one character to, to, to the rest, I found myself relying a lot on the dialogue to differentiate different characters. And the, uh, the mangaka does a, a good job of differentiating and having different characters sound different. Now, this does not mean that they each have a wildly different accent or anything you know, over the top like that, but just you know, each one feels a little bit differently in dialogue. And it, you know, it's enough to differentiate those characters even when you're not quite paying attention to the character designs or can't quite tell them apart. Um, not that the character designs are, you know, all, all look the same, but you know, it's just that's kind of the style. The story in this volume is, or the plot, is entirely set up. It's just establishing who the characters are, what the stakes are, and what they're trying to accomplish. And this is actually an interesting way of doing it. In a lot of stories, you'll be introduced to your main character, maybe a villain, maybe you know, one or two characters, and the other ones will be kind of off to the side. You only see them in bits and pieces. In here, we're introduced to sort of the full crew. You know, early on, and we spend a lot of time with all of these characters. So by the end of the volume, you have a pretty good feel for the entire set of characters in the story. Not that more characters won't come in later, but I thought that was an interesting way of, of, of handling it. Now, the artwork is typical Shonen Ai. Very shiny, very glittery, you know, typical Shonen Ai stuff. Very few backgrounds. It, you know, you'll, you'll see an establishing shot, things like that, and then it'll focus in on the characters. And the layout is rather cramped. I mean, each panel is kind of full of faces. And I understand that is meant to bring you in to what the characters are feeling. You know, the closer you are to those, to those faces, the more you see the actual emotion on those faces and in those characters. But it can be kind of off-putting, especially, again, for those not familiar with these things, because each panel is you know, full of characters who are emoting. And that's, you know, whoa. Also, because of the minimal backgrounds, or the, the, the relative lack of backgrounds, characters sometimes feel like they're kind of floating in these white voids. Again, it's just kind of, it, that's the style, but it is off-putting to, you know, to the rest of us. And it can be difficult remembering sort of where people are, what's going on, what the, the situation is, what the scenario is, things like that. You know, that's just the way it is. And that is also reflected in the overall feeling of the, sort of the atmosphere of this volume, which is weird because it's very spastic, really. Well, not very spastic, but it does bounce back and forth between comedy and drama and things like that. And not just in a genre sense, characters will feel elated and then very depressed and then very, you know, very elated and very friendly and um, 
there, there'll be some very dramatic moments, and it's bouncing around a lot compared to other manga I've seen, I'll put it that way. This is a very emotionally up and down focused kind of a manga. Surprising to me, but again, that may just be a Shonen Ai thing. So that is out there and ready for you all to, uh, to see. Volume 1 is available in America. The second volume is dropping any day now. It might actually be released by the time this video comes out, but uh, it, it's out there and available. You can buy it on Amazon, places like that, and check out more of Alice in the First. And if you do, please drop by and let us know what you think. Head over, head over to otakunovideo.net or shoot me an email at brent at otakunovideo. I've got forums and chat room and all sorts of fun stuff and fun ways for you to talk more about this and other manga that you love. So that's it for this review. Until next time, may you make lots of beautiful music yourself.